Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock. It's Friday. It's Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. Now, this is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject uh, and then I move on to the next subject. It's quick, it's snappy. You never know what you're going to get. Now, today on this week's five by five, I'm going to do another performer spotlight special. Now, these are, are videos that I've done quite a few, to, a few of these recently. It's where I take a particular performer that I really enjoy their body of work and I present to you five videos of them performing in a real life real world environment so you can see them performing you can see the type of magic that they do and then what I do is I talk about why they are so great and what we can learn from watching their performances and today I'm actually going to be talking about Dave Williamson David Williamson now I've been a fan of Dave Williamson for years and years and years his book and his DVD set and uh, the uh, sort of huge project that he did through Luis de Matos uh, were really inspirational to me. I very much relate to the style that Dave portrays when he's actually on stage. Um, his madcap zany style, his very comedy enthused style is something that I've always wanted to kind of push myself towards. And, and you know, I wish I was even a 20th of, uh, you know, as talented as Dave, Dave, Dave Williamson is. He's absolutely genius in every single way, shape and form. And uh, you're going to see that in this video, hopefully. Now, over the years, I've performed so much material by Dave Williamson. I really have. And it was very difficult to choose which, um, which, performances to include in fact in the future I might actually include another performance as well um, another I might actually do another Dave Williamson 5x5 five five special because honestly I could watch this man until I was blue in the face and then some uh, he's he's I think the thing you need to understand about this guy is he's kind of got that style so that when you see him perform you never know what he's gonna do you never know what he's gonna do um, and as I say, I've performed so many tricks over the years um, of Dave's, it's just ridiculous. So it's very hard to find five videos that I wanted to actually showcase to you, those specific five. Um, but I think I've rounded them down. I'm going to start off. The first video is going to be showcasing Dave's ring and string routine. Now, for me, this is probably the greatest ring and string routine that anybody has ever created ever. I remember seeing it for the first time and I wasn't really aware of the principle that he was using behind it. I had up until that point only been aware of the principle of, you know, having one ring and one rope and having the ring come off and go on the rope using various different sleight of hand methods, kind of inspired by Daryl. And, and, and when I saw him do this, I was like, this is the cleanest trick I've ever seen. How is he doing this? And when I actually learned it and started performing it, the reactions are incredible. So let's start off by looking at the ring and string routine. Uh, and I'm not talking about a finger ring, I'm talking about a big ring. Let's have a look at this first of all, and uh, and then I'll talk about why it's so good. Now look, I want you to examine the rope and verify it's an ordinary piece of rope. No trap doors, escaping gases, no mirrors or strings, no multi-level marketing products or Scientology hidden in there anyway. Look, did, was it good? Good. Good solid rope? I mean Good. Do you know what you're looking for? <laughs> exactly! So how good could it be? I really want you to examine the rope. I want you to check out every single inch of the rope. Make sure it's... Because later you're going to say, oh, it's going to snap it. He didn't give me enough time. She's going to be at the bar at the studio going, wham, wham, wham. Oh, you know, Chris, he was gay. That must have been a trick rope. He didn't give me enough time to look at the guy there. Look. So check it out. Every... No, no, no. That's not good enough. I'm not satisfied. Hi. Would you pull on it, sir? You pull on it, too. Pull on it, but not. Nah. Pull, pull. Make sure you guys look like babies. This is not a game. I'm serious. Come on, you look like a big he-man. You got balls. Pull on it! Yes! A solid piece of rope. This means nothing. It means nothing. In three minutes from now, I'm going to be doing some amazing things with the rope. And if you think for a second it's a trick rope, it means nothing. So, nah, people are going to come to you after the show and say, nah, was that a real piece of rope? And you're going to say, yes, it was the best goddamn piece of rope I've ever examined in my life! <laughs> and you! Do you have a bracelet that I can borrow? A solid bangle type ring, four inches in diameter, steel, chrome. I have one embedded in my rear end. There it is. And you get the honor of examining that and verify that that too is absolutely solid. No gaps or trap doors or openings. Chris, right? Uh -huh. Chris, later they're going to come to you and they're going to say, Chris, it must have been a trick ring. One of them had a slit or a cut in it. 
And they're going to say it had to be because of the things he was doing with the rope that now we know, we trust now, we love now. She wouldn't lie to us. It was a great piece of rope. But Chris, they're going to say, Chris, it's you. It must... Jesus Christ, Chris. It must be $14. I had that chrome bladed down at the bumper shop. Knock it off. It was a real solid piece of ring, steel ring thing. And you're going to say, yes, by God, I stake my reputation as a... What do you do? Structural engineer. Structural engineer! A structural engineer, no less! I've never had a better commitment. Is that a solid as a structural engineer? Yes, you've got my learned opinion on that, and that is a sound ring. Bullshit! Okay! <laughs> a solid ring. No, did you find the weld spot? No. Nope. Mr. Structural Engineer, I'll show you. it's that big bumpy part right over. Oh, well, this one doesn't have one. You're right. Do you see any holes in the ring, Mr. Structural Engineer? Yeah, the the You're the first guy to find it in 15 years. My God, he is a structural engineer. He found the hole in the ring. Now, the idea is to try to remove the ring. I'm going to stand up for this. Remove the ring from the rope without untying the knot. A solid rope that not examined every inch. Chris examined the, the ring, and he's a. You're not a structural engineer, are you? No. Are you, are you a seamstress or anything? Do you work with fabric at all? What do you do? I'm a banker. <laughs> I'm going to do a trick with we money later. Stick around. All right. <laughs> Hold the ring. A ring and a rope, and the ring magically passes right through the rope. We have a miracle verified by a special engineer and a banker. I touch the ring towards the knot. Watch, guys. Hop. Yes! Yes! It goes right there. I'll show you how I do that. As a structural engineer, you're probably curious. Would you hold the ring while I hold the rope? I have a pair of magical scissors, and they cut right through the rope like this, Chris. Chris, cutting through the rope. You see crap like this every day down at the office, right? Building bridges. This, this is nothing compared to that. Actually, I use two pieces of rope, which I keep fastened together with super glue, like this. I call it super glue. They call it the house dressing across the street at the hotel. The only way to catch me when I do this now, where are you? Is to keep your eyes on the two ends. Chris? Into the pocket. Into the pocket they go. All the way in. Except for this one. Which stays out here with this one. Yes! And there it is, the big finish. You lead the applause, jump up and down with the nuts. Wait till I finish. So one thing that you have to understand about Dave Williamson is his sleight of hand is incredible. After all, this is a man that invented the striking vanish. You see him performing various different routines and you realize just how skillful it is that what he does. You read his book by Kaufman and Greenberg. You read that initial book that he bought out, Williamson's Wonders, and you realize that he is incredible when it comes to sleight of hand. But... It's hidden, and part of the reason it's hidden is because of his performance style. For him, or at least, I, you know, I've never spoken to the man, so I don't know for sure, but watching interviews with him uh, and, and reading articles on him and watching him perform and reading his book, I, I have a feeling that for him, entertainment is first and foremost. And even though he can do all of the slights and he can do all of the moves and he can do absolutely everything, for him, the single most important thing is that he makes the trick entertaining. And the ring and rope routine, as well as other routines that you're going to see on this video, is a perfect example of somebody who's doing something that's fairly technical, but it doesn't appear to be technical. It appears to be effortless. And one of the reasons it comes across so effortless is because of the comedy that he's infusing into his performance. And it's almost like he doesn't know what he's going to do. He doesn't know what he's going to say. He's going off in different directions. Now, I suspect that there is an element of him ad-libbing, absolutely 100%, but I also think a lot of this is planned out. I believe that a lot of the performances he does, he's kind of going into it knowing he's going to have that madcap, zany style. But to an outsider looking in, it looks insane. It looks like he's got no idea what he's doing and he's making it up on the spur of the moment. And, and the magic... Although the magic is really strong and really powerful, it, 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 plays, it plays second fiddle to the entertainment. But you know what? We've all been there where we've performed in front of a person and they go, you know what? I don't really like magic. Uh, and, uh, I, I, you know, th there are people out there that don't like magic, but 
There are people that don't like comedy, but if you have comedy and you have magic and you put them together, you're going to have those people that don't particularly like comedy, but they like the magic or vice versa. You're going to be in a much better situation. And this is a perfect example of that. The ring and rope itself, the ring and rope routine is an incredible routine. And it's a, a perfect example of just doing something that will pack small, play big. This is a ring and a rope at the end of the day, but look at how much mileage that he gets in this particular routine. Look at how, mi how much mileage he gets from performing this. This is the sort of thing that you could do in a close-up situation. This is the sort of thing that you could do on stage. You could do it in a cabaret, and it's going to bring the house down every single time. So there you go. Uh, you can learn that directly from one of his DVD sets. But we're going to move on now. We're going to move on to probably the routine that Dave Williamson has become synonymous with, which is Rocky Raccoon. Now, I've got millions of different options when it comes to showing uh, a Rocky Raccoon performance because... Dave does it all of the time. And, you know, he made this routine famous. You know, he was the guy um, that, that, that made it famous. Lots of other people have done Rocky Raccoon, but nobody ever does it like Dave Williamson. If you haven't seen it, this is quite a long clip. This is uh, this is quite a long uh, clip. I, I think there's uh, maybe a 10 minute clip of him performing it on a ship from about 10 years ago. So let's have a look at this clip and then we'll talk about it. I mean, uh, come over here. <laughs> I want you all, you three men, are going to protect Jaden. Jaden, stand right here. I mean, protect up. Come in, in, Nina. Come over here, guys. Form a perimeter around your girlfriend. Now, turn around. Come on. Turn around. Now, do me a favor. Here, take off your shoe. If anything comes at Nina, you hit it with that. That'll be your record, okay? Same with you. And you just take off. What are you doing? Good well, here. We can have one of the day's shoes. Here comes my furry little friend. Remember, don't hit, don't hit Lena. Yeah. There's my furry friend, and he's carrying a cage of some sort. Thank you, furry friend. Come on, Rocky. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. Pause, pause, pause. Huh? It's okay. It's okay. He's on. He's a baby. Rocky. Hey. Whoa. Hey. He's just a little baby. <laughs> Okay, here, 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 here,
here's the thing. Here's the deal, guys. Nina, come here. Nina, Rocky wanted to do a card trick, so you're going to help me. Stand right here. Uh -huh. This will be your special spot right here. Okay, good. Now we have a deck of cards. Don't tell the other kids this, but I like you the best. Okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to hold the hoop. Can you hold the hoop? Yeah, okay. Bring out the flaming hoop! Okay, there's no flaming hoop. You're going to just hold the hoop. You're going to be a hoop. Make a hoop with your heart. Yeah, and just keep your head out of the hoop. Look up in the air. There you go. There's the hoop. Kind of like a hoop. There you go. Perfect. 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 Folks, what could possibly go wrong? It's like, oh, well, I'm going to see you. There's too much oil down there. Now, Rocky! Your mission, should you choose to accept this, is to jump. Rulo, that was like, way to go. Not yet. That was good, Nina. I'll pick it up. I'm 53 years old. You just stand there and look at it, kid. The hoop is not working for me, buddy. Have a seat. Sit down on your face. Yeah, lean back, all the way back, lean back. We're going to do goal posts. Here we go. Okay. Whatever you do, don't sneeze. You know what I mean? What I mean is don't fart on me. Guys, come over here. Right here. Folks, here we go. We're going to count down from three to one. This is my big finale, the peak of my career. Are you ready? So Dave performs in so many different places. He performs on stage, you know, he does family shows. You see him here on a cruise ship. Uh, he performs in, 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 in so many different environments. And this is an example of somebody, somebody who's taken a prop that many people would consider a kid's prop, but he's been able to make it work in every single type of performance that you could possibly imagine. So even though it's a prop that you might consider to be a kid's prop, I've seen him perform this in front of like nothing but adults and absolutely absolutely have them on the edge of their seat in hysterics. But in this particular video, you saw him have a, uh, a bunch of kids up on stage and bring the house down by performing this routine with the kids on stage and having them involved in the act for me. And the reason I wanted to include this video is because this is a masterclass in how to actually manage children, how to get them involved in their in your act and how to elevate the act through the use of children. I mean, what we have here is we have four or five kids on stage and he's getting them to do really funny, really silly things. He's dragging them around. He's putting them there. He's putting them here. He's picking them up. He's putting them down. It wouldn't work for every single magician. It absolutely would not work for every single performer. But for Dave Williamson, it works. It works in spades and then some. Uh, Dave Williamson's uh, handling an approach towards children they're finding it hilarious but it's working on a completely different level for the adults in the audience as well every there's not a dry high in their house everybody is laughing everyone's having a great time and isn't that what magic's all about the magic again has become secondary with this i mean when the raccoon flies out the thing it's like the cards have fallen like five minutes before anybody else performing this routine and be going oh my gosh the timing's got he doesn't care he doesn't care because at the end of the day, it's all about entertainment. And at that point, when that raccoon has left that uh, raccoon holder, Dave's already won. He's won the hearts of the end of the audience over already. This is a super strong routine. And it's a masterclass again in how to fill a stage with nothing more than a few kids and a few simple props. And you know, you, I speak to magicians that go, oh, you know, I'm a stage performer. I do family audiences, but I'm never going to get a kid up on stage. The thought of getting a kid up on stage scares the ever-living jahibas out of me. Well, you know what? Here's a guy that's at the top of his game, bringing kids on stage, and he's not doing a kid's trick. He's using the kids in the uh, routine to really just like make 
everything play bigger than it would have done if he'd done it just with himself and maybe one volunteer. Um, if there's one thing that we can learn from watching Dave Williamson in this video, it's understanding how important it is when you're doing shows where there's kids in the audience to work out a way of bringing those into your show and elevating your show through the use of kids in the audience. Now we're going to go on to another video and we're going to have a look at another uh, video that uh, Dave Williamson has, has uh, sorry, we're going to look at another routine, I'm going mad, that Dave Williamson has put together. And this particular one is Dave's cups and balls routine. So let's have a look at that right now. Two steel cups, just hang on to that, Brian. <laughs> Two little rubber balls and a magic wand, which I just happen to have right here. We'll use this one. <laughs> a magic wand. Now, both of the little rubber balls are both exactly the same size as you can see, Sandra, especially this one right here. And you can squeak it if you like to prove that it's man-made rubber. This, oh, I'm sorry, it was this one. Um, pardon me. Oh, maybe it was this one, if you don't mind just squeaking that. Oh, Sandra, I'm so sorry. You fell for the oldest gag in the world. That's my gullibility tester and you passed. That's a whoopee cushion for a mouse. That's what that is. I'm sorry. You can squeak that if you like, Brian. Yes! Oh, man! You'll fall for anything. She's not laughing with you. She's not laughing with you. The mystery of the cups and bowls. I wave the wand over the bowl and it becomes so small that it vanishes. Once again, watch the bowl as it vanishes at the fingertips thusly. Like that. <laughs> Oh, and they reappear in the cups. You lift this one, I'll lift that one, just like Siegfried and Roy, you be Roy. All right, yeah. I suppose what I want you to do now, Sandra, is take the magic wand, tap the cup, make the ball vanish, and jump into the other cup. Yes, it's a miracle. Unbelievable, but true. Wait a second, here's the secret, folks. There's a small hole in the bottom of the cup. It's true, and you can actually push your finger through there if you like. Oh, got you again, an old gag, look at that. But anyway, into the pocket, under the knee, through the top of the cup, lands inside, snap the fingers, denders too. Anyone can do this, even you, Sandra. If you don't mind taking the magic wand, tap the, uh, sorry, tap the magic cup, and the ball will take the wand if you don't mind. Tap the cup, put the, <laughs> oh, sorry. Take the wand and tap the cup, hit it hard. Don't be afraid to smack it. Well, yeah, just hammer it like, that's okay, I can buy another one. And show the people, oh, great, thank you. Now do it again, if you don't mind. <laughs> no, not the same one, not the same one, the other one. Stop that one. That's good. Unbelievable, but here, here. Put, the, put it back in the bag. Put it back in the bag. No, 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 it's not good. Watch it, look out, look out, look out, watch it. Watch it. So this is the Cups and Balls. Now, I, I, this was first published, I believe, in Williamson's Wonders. Um, and when I read this routine, this two-cup routine, I'd never seen a two-cup routine before. This was before I'd seen, uh, like, uh, Tommy Wonders. And I saw this routine, I was like, two cups? And the moves that he was using to, do the, uh, to use these two cups, I was like, oh, that's really good. And I remember learning the whole routine from beginning to end and learning this whole thing. And for a long time, I actually performed a two cup and ball routine. And I got really great reactions with it. And then I saw Dave perform it. And I realized that I was doing that routine a massive disservice because the, the, the Dave's two cup and ball routine is technically very demanding. It really is. It's technically very, very demanding. There's a lot of really tricky moves in his two cup and ball routine. But you wouldn't know that. And, and, and again, I come back to what I said in The Ring and Rope, which is he may be doing really technical stuff. He may be doing really difficult stuff. But the focus is always the entertainment. He knows his character. He's got this madcap, zany, crazy style of performer that's just all over the place and you don't know what he's going to do next. And oh my gosh, what's Dave going to do next? This is insane. This is ridiculous. And honestly... The, the reactions that, that, that he gets from that. Again, it's not about the magic. You see so many people 
doing the cups and balls and they do it exactly the same way. These cups are uh, the oldest trick in magic. This is from ancient Egypt and you can actually see hieroglyphs uh, if you go down to Egypt of these cups. Now I've actually got two cups and I've got two balls and this ball's going to go underneath this cup and I snap my fingers and now it's disappeared. Now I'm going to go and it, it's kind of that, that over and over and over and over again. And what Dave's done is he understands his character. He understands his character and understands how his character is portrayed on stage. And every single trick he does, regardless of the trick, you see him performing it in a way that's very, very Dave. I would not have never seen anyone perform a cups and balls routine like this, especially one that's so technically demanding. So if there's one thing that we can learn from watching this performance, it's the importance of understanding your character. It's important is uh, the importance of understanding your character and then making sure that the magic that you do fits within the character that you're portraying and making sure the magic that you do fits with you as well. And there's nothing that shows that more than this next video. So this next video is a performance of the Gypsy Thread, Dave Williamson style. Let's have a look at it. Anybody have a light? A lighter? Get that lighter out of my pocket, Brian. Never mind, I'll get it. How oh, dare you. Would you mind? Now, I'm not a smoker, and kids, I don't adv advocate smoking at all. I don't think you should smoke. A trick with a... Uh... Here. Would you mind lighting the... Uh... Do you, move with your, move my, I'll do it. <laughs> that's happened once before, that's why I don't smoke. <laughs> Is it lit? <laughs> <laughs> So, look, when you think Gypsy Thread, a lot of people think uh, Wayne Dobson, maybe, uh, but generally as a rule, most people think um, uh, Eugene Berger and his wonderful performance of the Gypsy Thread, where he's sitting at a table and he's telling a story about the universe and about ancient gods and, and you're listening to every word and his voice is hypnotic and you're getting drawn into this story and everything's beautiful and everything's wonderful and everything is fantastic and, and, and you know, it's this beautiful story. What you have here is just completely mental. That's what you have. You have just spit and cigarettes and... And, 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 and everything going on. It's the same routine. Technically, it's the same routine. But you could put Eugene Berger in, an, in front of an audience and have him perform his version of the Gypsy Thread. Then you could have Dave Williamson come out and do that. And people wouldn't even think it's the same trick. They wouldn't even think it was the same trick. And, and again, I'm sorry to labour the point, but what does that tell us? That tells us the importance of really knuckling down 
understanding your character and not just copying what other people are doing, but try and perform something in your own way. And that's so important. I see so many people that go out and they're a carbon copy of other magicians. They're a carbon copy of other performance styles. The amount of kid magicians that I've seen that do a trick and they go, hey, so when I was traveling through India, in the, uh, India when I was younger, and it's like, dude, you're 14 years old, what the hell? Uh, the one thing that I see Killian O'Connor doing, the one thing I see Ryland doing is that they perform but they act like kids. They do the sort of magic that you would be interested in if you're a kid. And, and that is something that they understand. It's something that we all should understand as a magic community, that when we're performing, you need to make the trick your own. How do you make the trick your own? Well, you make the trick your own by looking at it and going, well, okay, this guy's doing it this way. That's fine. How am I gonna do it? Okay, now I'm gonna show you one more routine. Uh, which is a classic of magic. It's the world famous oldest trick in the book. It's ring flight. I'm going to show you uh, Dave Williamson performing ring flight. And that is a beautiful ring. Does it come off? Um, yes. <laughs> oh, good. Let's have it. You don't mind, do you? Yes. Oh, you do mind. Well, let's have it anyway. That's beautiful. <laughs> this is the famous ring trick. You see it there? Yes. That's your ring. Watch closely as the ring melts. Oh, wait, get a close-up of your face here. I don't want to catch that expression. Some people think it goes inside the tie. I'll show you. It's not in the tie. That's just the lining. Look, no ring. Examine that. Do you see a ring? Any ring at all? No, look. Check it out. No, tear into it. I know that you want to. No, pull on it. No, check. No, ah! Not like that. I just meant look at it. You think it's in his tie? Come on, take this thing. We do have a little bit of a st string there hanging out there. I'll get it. Get it from the corner. Ugh, oh, I'm sorry. That's very nice. Thanks. <laughs> but I think this is more of a fashion statement. But anyway. Believe it or not, in the trunk of my car, which is a 1973 lime green Chevrolet with primer on the left fender, <laughs> parked out back by the dumpster behind the theater, inside the trunk of my car is a peach crate. And inside that peach crate is a ball of wool. And inside the ball of wool is a ring box. And inside the ring box, you'll never guess what you'll find. Well, we already discussed that. I have to tell you, I have a lot of um, devices attached to my car for safety reasons. This is the key to the um, ignition. This is the key to the trunk. This is the key to your heart. I can't believe it. Does that look familiar? Does that look like your ring? It is. An exact duplicate of your ring. Let's hear it for Sandra. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, my God. So again, what do we learn from that video? Well, the first thing that I can tell you right now, the first thing I can tell you right now is again, it's all about the performer and it's all about the character and it's about making the trick your own. But I've said that over and over and over again. So the other thing that I wanna show you is ring flight. I want you to think of the tricks that you've just seen Dave Williamson do. Bearing in mind, he's traveled the world performing on stage. He's performed in Vegas. He's performed at the highest level and continues to perform at the highest level. What are the tricks that we just saw him do? Rocky Raccoon, standard dealer item. Gypsy Thread, been around since time began. Cups and Balls, been around since time began. A Rope Trick, been around since time began. And now, Ring Flight, every close-up performer does Ring Flight. It's not like he's looking for the latest, greatest trick. It's not like he's trying to create this incredible thing that never, no one's ever seen before. What Dave Williamson does is he spends his time and his energy taking routines that everyone does, but making them his own. He doesn't try and do it. And, and, and again, I'm talking about making your trick your own, but you don't have to rush off and do and buy that trick. Oh, I want that. That's 500 pounds. Nobody else is going to be doing that. You know, people are booking Dave all over the world when he's doing ring flight and cups and balls and gypsy thread. It's not about the trick. It's about you. 
It's not about the trick. I'm going to say it again because it's so important. It's not about the trick. It's about you. It's about how you can make that trick different. It's about how you can inject your own personality and your own character into that trick to make it different to anything that anybody else does. And if there's one thing that I learned from watching Dave Williamson over these years and watching him on these videos that I've shared with you today, it's that you have to do that if you want to be successful, if you want to get ahead, if you want to get the type of bookings that nobody else is getting, you've got to try and make those tricks unique. And that doesn't mean buying a new trick or creating something from scratch. That can just mean taking a different approach to presenting them, taking a different approach to your character and making those tricks fit your character character as opposed to changing your character for those tricks which is what a lot of people do they go right okay I've seen comedy magicians that are hilarious and then they sit down and they do this beautiful piece of magic and completely break character and then they go crazy again that's not the way to do it be like Dave so there you go, guys. That's another 5x5 five five in the bag, a Dave Williamson special. Now, I could do a second one of these. Tell me if you want me to do another second one of these, and I'd be more than happy to do so. Don't forget, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again soon with another video, but don't forget, you want to join the Netrix? You just go to www.thenetrix.com. See what all the fuss is about. There's now a Discord server attached to that, and myself and Chris James are going to make it the biggest Discord server in magic. Watch my work. I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.